Hey everyone, today we're going to go over Nintendo's uh, financial results for the second quarter of fiscal year ending March 2022. Uh, we're going to put all of the stories here from this in one video conveniently for you guys. Before we get into this stuff though, I want to remind you we do have a giveaway going on right now for Prime Tober. We are giving away a Switch OLED bundle. So obviously the Switch OLED's in there. We'll reveal other parts of the bundle as the month goes on. Uh, and... We are also going to be donating $100 to a charity of your choice after we obviously vet that charity as a legit place to give money to. So thank you guys so much uh, for all of your support and making these giveaways possible. Uh, to enter, all you need to do is be subscribed to the channel. That being said, let's get right into this financial results and let's go, baby. So we got financial results for the explanatory. This is the, ma the material provided by Nintendo from their financial meeting. Um, so some of the stuff we're not really going to go over too much uh you can kind of see that they have actually are a bit down year over year with their net sales their operating profit um their profit ratio is a little bit down the ordinary profits a little down net profits a little down um that profit ratio is a little down everything's a little bit down year over year but again there's been bigger supply issues for at this point than there was last year so it is what it is. Um, I'm not. I, I don't care too much about this. All you need to know is, even though it's down a little bit across the board, uh, this is still very, very good numbers and highly profitable, and one of Nintendo's most profitable years in the history of the company, at least profitable quarters in the history of the company. So, yeah. I, Nintendo's doing just fine. It doesn't really matter that they're down a little bit year over year. And you're going to kind of see this in the consolidated sales. Um, it's a little bit of royalty income. Um, and you can kind of see that still where we are, the Americas, which you know, which is North America and South America, but a majority of the sales come from North America, still make up a, a vast majority of Nintendo's actual sales and profitability and, and all that jazz. Um, you'll see Europe obviously makes up a, a cool 24%, Japan, and then um, the rest of the world here at 10.5%. So, yeah, I mean, these are pretty typical. This is what we know. The United States has essentially been the number one market for Nintendo systems since day one. And then obviously Japan and Europe is right there as well. All right. So let's go down the gross profits again. Everything's going to be a little bit down across the board, although their profit ratio looks like it did go up 3.3 points in the percentage. Uh, but overall, everything's going to be down slightly. It is what it is. Um, some of this is based on exchange rates and all that. So I don't really care necessarily about Nintendo's profitability. As long as they're making money and not losing money, that's usually a good sign uh, for the company on the whole. So we're going to kind of glance over some of these ordinary profits and, and, and consolidated financial forecast and all this. Uh, one thing we do want to note uh, is that we did a report earlier uh, where we talked about how, oh yeah, Nintendo is, um, you know, going to be downing their forecast or like they're going to be, you know, 20%. Nikkei was reporting, you know, that 20% short of Nintendo's original forecast of 30 million and Nintendo does does actually confirm this. So for Nintendo Switch Hardware, we have reduced our forecast by another 1.5 million because they originally had it at 30, they reduced it to 25.5, now they've reduced it to 24, which is exactly what Nikkei reported. So again, Nikkei got it right, credit to them. Um, our shipment forecast for the second half was reduced because of the change in our production plan due to the effects of the global semiconductor shortage, which is exactly what Nikkei told us. So anyone who is calling that report false really doesn't pay attention to Nikkei. While they do have false reports sometimes, uh, it's generally pretty spot on with Nintendo. On the other hand, we revised the Nintendo Switch software forecast up by 10 million units to 200 million units based on the sales performance of the first half. So basically they outperformed their expected software sales performance. So they upped their projections there while lowering the actual Switch unit projections. Uh, we also modified other factors, including exchange rate assumptions, all this stuff. That stuff doesn't matter as much to us. Um, so we get to the highlights here. Here's where some interesting stuff comes in. So, hardware for fiscal year 2021, quarter to one to quarter two, this is last year, was 12.53 million. This year, it's 8.28 million. That's actually a 34% drop off. Now, Switch has been selling out, and you could argue some people were holding out for the Switch OLED. So, we don't have Switch OLED sales in here. Uh, but yeah, that's obviously a drop over last year. Still really, really good. Still well on pace for Nintendo to hit 20 million because they usually sell a cool 10 plus million in quarter three during the holiday period. And then you round that out, you know, with, with two, three million uh, in quarter four and suddenly you're back over 20 million anyways. But it does look like Nintendo is probably going to fall short of the sales of last year. It is what it is. We'll have to just wait and see. Maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe OLED will end up boosting things. But again, Nintendo's massively impacted by supply at this moment. 
Uh, so you see the base Nintendo Switch obviously sold 8.36 last year, 6.45. And the big drop-off seems to be uh, here with Switch Lite, uh, where that has a 56.3% drop-off in sales. I think interest in Switch Lite in general has been waning for quite some time. That being said, while they sold 100.25 uh, million uh, software last year, they've sold 93.89 million. And we have some updates on some of the software sales here as well for that quarter. So uh, in you know so far, uh, anyways, this this year, uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, we have launched sales now for that. It sold six or 3.6 million. That is roughly about the same as it sold on the Wii. So for people hoping that, oh man, uh, this will see a sales boost due to all the Breath of the Wild fans, yes and no. It is selling better at this point it's probably hit four million in sales which is more than it sold on the nintendo wii but also that's not like crazy sales and really falls in line with the sales increase we saw when link's awakening was brought over here and, and sort of remastered and all this for nintendo switch that saw about a 500,000 or 600,000 unit bump in sales and this seems to be probably what we got in with skyward sword hd although we obviously don't have the most up-to-date figures so yeah um, there seems to be a trend here where some of these old Zelda games are just barely selling better than their original releases. Hey, you know what? It is what it is. It's still good to sell more, but, uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild has not really had an impact on reselling old Zelda games. Just something to kind of note in the, the back of your mind for future ports and remasters to maybe not expect, you know, massive sales beyond you know well beyond what the original sold uh, mario kart 8 deluxe continues to do really really well at 3.34 million in fact when we get to the actual overall sales of mario kart 8 you're going to find out that it's actually now the best-selling mario kart game of all time uh and of course, new horizons moved another 2.22 million pokemon snap by the way, we have sales in for that. That's 2.19. You notice the, the asterisk here. That is because it does not include sales from Japan because Nintendo did not publish the game in Japan. Uh, there is 18 titles uh, to date through fiscal year 2022 that are that have sold oh, at least a million units. Uh, 14 of those are Nintendo and four are by other software publishers, so third party. So yeah, unit sales for the entire Nintendo Switch family declined by 34% year on year to 8.28 million. That breaks down to, to sales of 6.4 million of Switch, 1.82 of the Switch Lite. You guys can kind of see all the figures here. Um, scrolling on down, we got Nintendo Switch hardware sell-in and outlook. And I across the New Horizons drove hardware sales significantly in the first half of fiscal year 21. Uh, first half of fiscal year 2022 was down from fiscal year 21, but exceeded fiscal year 20. So what they're trying to tell you is things are down compared to a record-breaking year last year, but they're still well ahead of two years ago. Um, even after the modification, uh, second half of fiscal year 2022 is expected to be at the same level as fiscal year 2021. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, scrolling around on the list, we can see a little update on digital sales. Obviously, there was also a slight decline in digital sales as well, uh, but nothing too bad. It's just more so there wasn't the big Animal Crossing kind of game sitting there to push things uh, like crazy. So we go by a million seller first party list. Obviously, we have uh, Skyward Sword here. You know, the, 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 these numbers, by the way, are in the million. So it's 3.6 million. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has sold 38.74 million. Animal Crossing New Horizons has sold 34.85. Pokemon Snap at 2.19. We have Ring Fit Adventure at 12.21 million. Ring Fit Adventure, baby. Likely going to hit 15 million at some point. That's awesome. Mario Golf Super Rush. Um, yeah. Didn't, didn't exactly um, break records, but uh, hey, it did do 1.94. That's pretty good for a Mario Golf game. Uh, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 25.71, and we'll go look at the full top 10 here so you guys can get an idea of the order because, you know, these are not in order. Um, Super Mario 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury has, has sold uh, 7.45 million. Uh, we have uh, Breath of the Wild here at 24.13. Breath of the Wild, baby, still selling strong. Super Mario Party at 16.48, although I expect those sales to kind of fall off with Superstars out. Uh, so, yeah, we have uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield at 22.64. We have Miitopia at 1.37. Good on Miitopia to become a million seller. Super Mario Odyssey at 21.95. And then Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe at 11.48. So that's kind of all of Nintendo's first party um, slash second party sort of uh, games because Pokemon is technically owned by Nintendo, but also, they, you, you know, it's not really developed by Nintendo, if that makes sense. All right. So get, get, moving past some of the sales stuff down here, uh, these are some things that I, I really want you guys to take a look at here. So this is 
a very important part of Nintendo's financial briefing every time because if there's game delays, this is where you would see those game delays. Uh, so if there's like a game that was essentially, say, announced for next year but has been delayed and pushed to 2023, they will talk about it here even if it hasn't been like announced in another form. So if you're wondering, like, is Breath of the Wild still going to come next year? Well, let's go through this list. Uh, so... This is from April 21st through September of 2021. I, oh, sorry. This is just the, the, the current uh, games that came out. I'm sorry. The list we want to look at is actually this one. These are the ones coming in the future or, you know, have already come out technically, um, but are after the publication of the day. So obviously we know the OLED model launch, Metroid Dread. We all know about that. Super Mario Party Superstars. We got Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, you know, on 11-19. We got Big Brain Academy, uh, you know, coming out on 12-3. Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus on 128, so no delays there. Kirby and the Forgotten Land, spring 2022. Again, that's looking good. Splatoon 3, still listed for 2022. Uh, we got the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, still listed for 2022. Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope for 2022, Bayonetta 3 for 2022, and then Metro Prime 4 is still TBA. So, essentially, nothing has changed. They obviously publicly announced the delay of... Uh, Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, which is interestingly not on the Japan list, although I think it is over here, yes. It's still here for spring officially, even though the eShop is listed April. It's here for spring officially for the United States and Europe. So Triangle Strategy as well makes that list because Nintendo pu publishes these games in some regions. So here's the thing. It looks like nothing's really been delayed. So if you want to hold out hope that Breath of the Wild 2 is still next year, hey, guess what? There is no reason at this moment to think otherwise. Plans have not changed on any of the games outside of the game, one game that was announced to be delayed. So, hey, pretty cool. You can see Nintendo's got a pretty strong lineup for 2022 already. Um, these are obviously dealing with some, some third-party partners and publishers um, You know that, that make games. You, know, you see FIFA on here and all this. We're not going to go too much over this stuff, uh, but yeah. Now they got all the supplemental information. Let's head on over to this. So this is the Mario Kart, um, you know, 8 Deluxe at 38.74. So I mentioned it is now the best-selling Mario Kart of all time. So let's figure out by how much. Go over to Wii. You see Wii Sports is here, Mario Kart Wii. Oh, look, 37.38. 37.74. So it's about 1%. 0.4 million units more and it's going to keep going up it's going to cross 40 million and that's huge and when you look at this you know the only game that beat it on wii was wii sports which was packed in with the switch now or packed in with the wii so yeah that's pretty crazy i mean these sales in general i mean look at this 37.38 33.14 30.32 for, for super mario we we play like these are some pretty crazy numbers right and then it starts to drop off a bit well, that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the packing game. So seven 20 plus million selling games on uh, Wii, Nintendo's best selling home console ever. Well, probably till the end of this fiscal year. Look at Switch, one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven. Switch has almost matched it and Switch isn't even done. So yeah, you wanna know how crazy games are selling on Switch for Nintendo. They're doing Wii numbers, actually doing better than Wii numbers in general. Um, the only reason we don't see an 80 million one is because it isn't like a packing game. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, it's pretty interesting, too, to see Animal Crossing New Horizons still sort of keep pace with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Obviously, not selling quite as much, but still, I mean, who would have thought Animal Crossing of all games like 20 years ago was going to end up being like potentially Nintendo's second most important IP behind something Mario related. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Who saw that being a 20 plus million seller? Maybe hits 30 million at some point. Breath of the Wild. Zelda's never even sold 10 million. Then now we have a Breath of the Wild Zelda game here at 24. Who saw that? Now Pokemon being up here. Yeah, we actually haven't had a Pokemon game hit 20 plus million in a while. So this is actually impressive. But still, it's not as shocking to see Pokemon get up there. Um, you know, Mario Odyssey getting up there is really, really good. So like this. This, this is a really good list. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the rest of this top 10 quick here. You can see, um, let's go. And there's Splatoon 2 in there, which obviously didn't really have much sales on the chart. Splatoon 2 sales are kind of done now, which to be expected. People are kind of waiting for Splatoon 3. And there's Ring Fit. So think about this. You essentially have to sell 12.5 to 13 million units to crack Nintendo's top 10. I keep thinking, like, how many games does Nintendo have enough that could do that? I mean, if Splatoon 3 grows past Splatoon 2, maybe Splatoon 3 could do it. 
Um, Breath of the Wild 2 could probably get on this list, at least based on these sales of Breath of the Wild. Uh, so I'm very curious like how many more games Nintendo has that can actually change what's in this top 10. I guess time will tell, you know. So uh, essentially, that's really it for the main story. I think I had a couple stories here up. Um, from Nintendo Life, uh, yeah, this is the re reconfirmation. We talked about that. Just make sure that I go through um, everything. Uh, yeah, everything looks like we, we, we pretty much uh, covered all these stories here that I had queued up. Oh, this is one that's interesting. Um, just to talk about in terms of home console sales, because remember, Nintendo Switch is considered a home console by Nintendo, and they do list it in their home console sales. Uh, what's interesting is obviously Nintendo Switch already has the second most amount of software ever sold in a Nintendo platform history. That's really, really cool. Although one could argue this 61 million for NES but selling 500 million software is really, really impressive because, like, we obviously, nine, you know, almost almost sold, you know, a billion, but, 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 but had, like, 40 million more in sales. So th I find this number to actually be really, really impressive. But the Nintendo Switch is right here, and I'm, I'm this, this 92.87, they're going to pass the Wii this year. They're going to pass it in the next quarter. The third quarter is going to pass Wii. Nintendo Switch is about to become Nintendo's best-selling home console of all time. And the question is, where can it go from there? You know, can it catch up to some of the handheld stuff? Like if we go over to the uh, IR information here and pop on over to uh, top-selling video game systems, um, you'll see it already passed 3DS. Uh, if you look at the handheld side of things, DS is obviously Nintendo's best-selling system ever. It's past Game Boy. Next up is uh, Game Boy Advance. Sorry. Next up is actually Game Boy. I think it's pretty safe to say it'll probably pass Game Boy. The real question is, can it become Nintendo's best-selling platform ever made? And who would have thought, you know, back in 2017, we'd be talking in 2021 about the possibility of Nintendo Switch being the best-selling system in Nintendo history? Now, it does have to get past 154 million units, which... I mean, that's no that's no easy task. So we'll see if uh, Switch can do that. Uh, it's probably going to be, let me see, if it, if it gets to, say, 105 to 108 this year, you know, that's probably still going to take at least another three to four years to do. And we don't really know how long Switch is going to be around and sold for, let alone be popular for. So to imagine that in 2024, Switch is still moving like 20 million units is a little, I don't know, probably a little uh, wishful thinking, but on Nintendo's part anyways. But yeah, this is... This is good. Nintendo's got great sales. Everything's looking solid, and it's hard to really be uh, disappointed in any of this stuff. Um, you know, pretty much everything is sold well, uh, and now we just await because we're not going to get official numbers from Nintendo for Switch OLED or, you know, say Metroid Dread. You know, people, ever, everyone really wants to know how, how well Metroid Dread did because there's a lot of, you know, predictions out there that it's like the best selling Metroid ever. Um, it deserves to be. Maybe it's the best Metroid game ever made. And people are really curious, how well did it actually sell? We're not really going to know for the, and now another three months or so. Like, you know, it, we're, we're not going to find out until what? Let me see. It's uh, November now, so December, January, like February next year. You know, we'll, we'll maybe finally find out about this maybe end of January, depending on when they want to post the numbers. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be it's going to be a bit here. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I, I'm really hopeful for Metroid Dread. And we'll have to see how Shin Megami Tensei 5 and the rest of the games do from this holiday period. So, yeah, it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jans from Nintendo Prime. You guys are amazing. Be sure to enter that giveaway by subscribing to the channel. And I got one more bonus video for sure coming later today, if not another news video, a standard news video. But we'll see. We got to talk about something that I said yesterday uh, that... Uh, you know what? We just got to have some fun with it because let's just say I might have lost a little bit of my uh, Zelda gamer card last night. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that a bit later today in a, in a rather fun manner. Because guess what, folks? I ain't perfect. I make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes vehemently make some pretty blatantly bad mistakes. Um, is what it is. I got no problem copping to it. You know, it happens. Catch you guys in the flip side.